Welcome, I'm Michael Bickard. Thanks for joining me today as we explore concepts with the objective of improving your management skills and growing your business. Now I can already see that most of you have your notepads and pens handy, and that's great. If you don't grab those because I want you to make a commitment that you will jot down some notes, jot down some sort of action item that you will implement in your business today because that's what this is all about, driving your business forward. Now, speaking of notes, there is a lot to cover today and I'll try to do it fairly efficiently. And therefore, I don't want you scratching down a whole bunch of notes of everything we cover and I'm gonna bring up some stuff on the screen. All of that material will be available to you as a link in the description, as a free download. And um, you can just go ahead and enter your, when you follow the, follow the link, you can enter your name and email address and we'll send you all that stuff for free. Still, take down notes if there's anything that sort of your brain gets stimulated. It's like, oh yeah, this is something that I can do right now in my business today. Then you should do that. With that in mind, let's get started. In today's discussion, we seek to answer the question, what should I do to maximize the potential of my people? Or what should I do to maximize the return on my investment in my human resources? Remember, most people believe, and I would agree with them, that your people are the most valuable resource in your business. They are the most valuable. They are the best part of your business. They are what differentiates you from your competition. And the degree to which you can maximize their potential will be proportionate to how much return you get on your investment in your people. So you should take the time to really focus on that. It just makes sense. So I'm going to try to go through those critical elements with you today that you need to do to maximize the potential of each of your people and to maximize the return on your investment in human resources. And as I do that, what I'm going to do, because this, this could take a very long time, it could take hours of discussion, and, and perhaps you and your team should, should take some time out and discuss with one another how you can maximize things and what uh, ideas are most relevant to your business. But what I'm going to do to try to go through this much more efficiently in the limited time that we have to spend together today is I will bring up these critical elements on the screen for you to look at. And I might elaborate on a point or two, but what I will do is I will also bring up a link to a video in which I elaborate on the concept. And therefore, on each of these things, you'll be able to go when you realize, hmm, that's, that's an area I should explore more. And I hope you'll do that with each of the elements because there's, there's some value in each of the videos that I'm gonna share with you. But uh, there might be some that really stand out for you and you, and you look at, the list and you say, boy, I don't know that much about that particular topic. I'm going to go and I'm going to visit that. The other thing I'm going to do and provide as a free download is a scorecard. So in addition to having this sort of checklist, this um, means of determining whether or not you are, you know, the checklist of the best practices or the critical elements, I'll also include a scorecard, a separate document, which will give you points and sort of give you a passing or failing grade as to your proficiency in maximizing the return on your human resources or maximizing the potential of your people. So that should be kind of a fun little exercise for you to go through and you can do that as soon as you finish watching the video, go through and sort of score yourself and then uh, you know, educate yourself with more knowledge and empower yourself with more knowledge by watching the videos that I linked to this and then you can rescore yourself and as you implement things over time, come back to that scorecard and see, are you improving? Are you getting greater uh, returns on your investment? Are you maximizing the potential of your people? And you should be able to notice that in your organization, but the little scorecard will be a fun way of measuring and tracking things over time. So let's get started. I'm gonna go through these things and I'm gonna try to do it sort of in chronological order beginning at the time that you have recruited somebody. Okay, so we're gonna make the assumption that you've already uh, hired somebody and now what should I do going forward from the moment that, you know, I hired them to throughout their career, what things should I do to maximize their potential? Okay, let's dive in. So you've hired somebody and now you want to ensure that you're maximizing the return on your investment and maximizing their potential. What's the first thing you need to do is you need to 
ensure that you are fulfilling your obligations. And the video that I have that you need to watch is the four obligations of management. This is critical. You have four obligations as a manager. It's all about putting the onus back on yourself from recruitment going forward. Your people's success to a very large degree depends on you meeting your obligations or at minimum what you want to do is ensure that any, any, in any way that they are not maximizing their potential, it's not because of you. And then once you've filled and fulfilled your obligations, then you can put the onus back on them or at least you can rest comfortably in your mind that that's the case. The next thing on the list here, the next critical element is you must have a very robust, comprehensive role description. You gotta get started somewhere. And so I've got written up here that you should have your role descriptions objective based. That is you have to have some clarity, some kind of document that both you and your team members can go to, to understand what are the objectives that they have in their, their role, in their job. So in a job description where you're just sort of saying, here are the things you do, here are the tasks you're going to complete, that isn't ideal from my perspective. Instead, you want to start with, how do I know if this person is successful or not? What do I expect them to accomplish? And that's what the objectives are. Start with that. And then from there, you can add, of course, tasks in terms of a job description, but start with a role-based uh, or objective-based role description. And check out our video, how to improve your odds of recruitment success. I know we said that this stuff is all after recruitment, but we elaborate on the concept of a role description in that video. The next critical element is to reconcile and align team member strengths with the role. It is very critical for maximizing the potential of your people that they are spending their time working on those things that they are good at, those things that are strengths. Now that won't be 100% the case, of course, but we have a video, best advice for success. We have some other videos. I should mention that with each of these, there are more than one video on our playlists and on our uh, channel that will likely help you on this. So go ahead and do searches. But these are the ones that, I'm decide that I've decided are probably the best place to get started to maximize your education and your knowledge as it relates to this concept. So aligning your people's role with their strengths and their tasks with what they're good at is a really critical part of maximizing their potential. The next critical element is Performance analytics and report cards. Once again, I've got it um, noted up there, objective base. So you can see a trend here. I would have you as an effective manager always start with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind. What's the objective? How do we know if they're successful? So you need to create some sort of performance analytics document, a report card we call it. That is critical. And we have two videos. This is the first of the two, performance analytics and report cards for greater success. You can look up the other one as well. That'll give you an idea of where to get started, the concept behind it. It's really, really critical. If you're not doing this, I can guarantee you, you're not gonna get the most out of your people. Spend some time on that. The next critical element is an onboarding strategy and implementation. You need to have a very robust, uh, as comprehensive as possible strategy and plan to follow from the moment you've hit go, from the moment you trigger to hire all the way through the life cycle and the career of that person in your organization. We've got a very, uh, very comprehensive, it's not exhaustive, but it's very comprehensive video on what things that you should do. And that one's called Onboarding Best Practices. It's almost an hour long. so you know, dig in for that one and you'll probably find a whole bunch of suggestions there that will improve your chances of success with your people and also maximize your return on the investment in your people. The next one is training commitment. You have to have a strong commitment to training your people. And we have a video on this one. The, the title of that is committing to training for team member success. And I think you're gonna find there's a lot of things as it relates to training that you can implement to make it easier for yourself. And again, once again, to maximize the potential of your people. You've gotta to commit to that. All right, next up on the critical elements list is performance evaluation schedule. So we've already said that you should have some performance analytics and a report card. But what I'm getting at here is you need to schedule the events 
in your calendar to make sure that you're reviewing that with your people at minimum once per month. Now, it doesn't have to be you personally, but it should be somebody who's, you know, covering your human resources management um, tasks along with the supervisor of that person. So if, if the person in question, the team member in question is your direct report, then you, you're going to want to be present at least as often as possible. It's got to be scheduled. That's the whole thing. Just having a report card and letting them view it, that's that's good. That's a start. But making sure that you go through it with them so that you can make sure that both of you agree on the relevancy of the information on the report card as well as the data accuracy, that's really critical for the success of that. So in terms of a video that you can watch, we've got one putting first things first, time management and prioritization. We've got probably four or five videos on this topic. This is the one where I think you might get the, the most of it and get the idea. If you're not scheduling it, if you're not making it a priority, it's not going to happen. And you just once again, you won't well, maximize your return. The next critical element on the list is aligning of objectives. So the real key to making sure you get the most out of your people is make sure that you're rowing in the same direction, so to speak. That is to say, they want what you want. You know, you've said that in a meeting, hey, we all want the same thing. Is that true? Do your people really want what you want? Of course, each of us have some basic needs and we all kind of want the same sort of thing out of life to be happy and that kind of stuff. However, what how are you remunerating your people? How are you recognizing them? How are you measuring their performance? All these kinds of things are really critical. And I've, I have observed throughout my management career that so many managers fail to take the time to ensure that throughout all stakeholders, there's alignment of objectives and incentives and that becomes a major problem. You'll find symptoms all over the place there. The video in which we elaborate on that is how to diagnose and cure many business problems. We have at least two videos um, that might help you with that. Search for another one if you want more information. The next critical element is accountability. And this is, this is really, really key for your people. As I said, I'm going through this list of critical elements sort of in chronological order from when I hired somebody, what things do I need to make sure are in place before I move on to the next critical element. But accountability has got to be way up there in terms of importance, in terms of if you were going to weight that scorecard, you'd weight accountability very heavily here. If you don't hold your people accountable, then they're, they're not going to ever maximize their potential. So we have a video called The Power of Accountability in which we elaborate on that. The next critical element is feedback mechanisms. What you want to make sure that you have, and so many organizations don't, even big companies lack this, is the proverbial suggestion box. And you want to have some kind of maybe digital-based, uh, database, cloud-based uh, uh, area that people can go and share their feedback with you. If it is very difficult for people to give you their feedback, you're never going to maximize their potential. You are going to lack a uh, culture of communication and you're just going to, you're not going to get the best return on your investment. So it could be a meeting, a, a recurring meeting where people get together and discuss and uh, how things are going. And uh, in that meeting, you align objectives. Uh, but there also needs to be feedback mechanisms for sort of complaints, concern resolution, all that kind of thing. And you, it's it's not as simple as saying, hey, my door is always open, because that's not true. Your door should not be always open. Your door should be closed a lot of the times that you're busy, focused on something else, and your people will become discouraged, demoralized, deflated if they can't get the uh, feedback to you and get your feedback back to them. It's a, a two-way channel. Make sure you visit our video entitled, You Need Help, Use Your Team to Grow Your Business to get more information on that. The next critical element on our list is to celebrate success. And we have a video entitled the very same thing. You need to be providing recognition to your people. You know what it's like when you accomplish something, it's nice to get a pat on the back. In fact, that is the number one thing that people desire in work. It's not their paycheck. It is recognition for their accomplishments. So make sure that you're spending the time to do that. Watch our video in which we elaborate on that. Next critical element, element for success is growth and advancement opportunities. People have an underlying need to grow and to develop and to learn. 
It, and that's just, that's factual for everybody. Now it varies from one person to another, how much emphasis, how much importance they place on that, how big a value it is in their life. But everyone has this, this innate desire to grow and to develop. And you want to try to consider how can people grow and advance within your organization? Not everyone is going to, you know, aspire to own a business or be in management or that kind of thing, but they do have an underlying need to feel that they're growing and they're not stagnant in place. You need to ensure to get the maximum potential out of all of your people that you have set up some mechanism to communicate to them how that happens. We elaborate on that in our video entitled Responsibility as a Reward, Early Stages of Succession Planning. Don't let these titles throw you off, by the way. You might say, well, uh, with this particular individual, I'm not interested in a succession plan with that person. We elaborate on concepts in a more general uh, way in some of the videos, and you can take out of each of them what you will. The next critical element for ensuring that you maximize the potential of your people is ongoing strategies for attracting talent. Now, this is the last one I have on the list, but I have a few bullet points besides the video that I wanted to um, uh, recommend to you because I think this might be a bit of a controversial subject and it's one that I think people too readily dismiss is, well, what do you mean ongoing strategies for attracting talent? I, I've got everybody I need on my team right now. I, uh, when I need somebody else, then at that time. And that's a mistake. Instead, you want to always be looking for talent. You always want to have a pipeline of talented individuals who want to join your team. And there are three main benefits that you get out of that. It mitigates the risk of urgency for replacing a person. And that is not the way to start. So we're talking today about maximizing your return on your investment in human resources. Well, and, I, and I'm, I'm saying those two things, right? I'm saying, number one, you want to maximize the potential of your people. And then I repeat the thing a different way, which is maximize the return on your investment in human resources. The reason they're not the same is because if you hired the wrong person, you could still maximize their potential, but what if their potential was you know, much lower and by you doing the right things, you hired a, a person with greater potential and now you get a better return on your investment entirely. So I hope that made sense to you, but by keeping your feelers out there, your antennae out there, and you're always open to discussing talent, that is going to help you so that you're not in this situation that when somebody quits or if you had to terminate somebody that, oh, I need somebody immediately, they're critical to the business. That kind of urgency is not going to be conducive to finding the very best talent. The next reason for it is that it holds a team member accountable. Imagine if somebody who works for you is like, feels completely secure in their job. And I don't want your people to feel insecure in their positions, but if they're like, nobody else can do what I do, they've got a lot of leverage and it's, it gets difficult. I've witnessed this in management. It's whole, hard to hold people accountable when you feel that they are absolutely critical to your organization and they might be offended or they might quit at the drop of a hat or whatever. The opposite occurs when your people know that there is a lineup of people wanting to work here. There are uh, there are any number of people, talented individuals, who would gladly replace me if I wasn't filling this role. I don't want you to create a sense of insecurity. I want your people to love their job so much that they would hate the thought of losing it. And part of that is uh, what you have to do in terms of ongoing that commitment of ongoing strategies for attracting talent is making sure you have a great place to work, making sure that those people that do work for you love it there. By doing that, you're going to attract more talent and then there's this sort of synergistic effect where people love their job, they wanna keep their job and that's beneficial for both of you. And then the third one point I have on this is it empowers both parties by enabling development beyond the role. Remember, part of the reason, part of your goal should be ideally when you maximize someone's potential, they're far over qualified because of your synergistic investment in one another. They, they put in that effort and you invest in them. And now they are overqualified for the role for which they originally applied and were hired. And now maybe they can advance to doing things that are far more valuable for your organization. That's a very empowering concept for them. 
And you can only enable that by continuously looking for more talent because people can't do everything. Now, certainly when people get um, more experience, they can take on more uh, tasks and they're more efficient. They can get things done more effectively. However, what I observe happens often in management is people are sort of, if you'll forgive the expression, they're held down oh, we don't want to promote you because you're so valuable in what you do right now. That's a terrible place for you to be as a manager. It's a terrible place for any of your team members to feel. They're just going to go and find another organization that allows them to contribute the maximum value that they can. And so that should be your organization. So this is very empowering for you where you're, you're seeing somebody develop and you're really happy. Hey, wow, I never knew that person could do all these things. They're great. You're going to let them advance. They're helping your business grow at the same time. But because you've been uh, committed to an ongoing strategy for attracting talent, you're not worried about, you know, taking them away from some of the critical things they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So those are the three main points on why you want to always be recruiting, so to speak. Um, and we have a video called Mitigating Recruitment Urgency, and that's the video that you'll get the most information on and elaborate on that. So those are the primary elements I wanted to discuss with you today. I tried to go through that fairly quickly and efficiently because there's a lot of material there, a lot to cover. Um, but really what you're trying to do with today's material is just sort of do a, a reconciliation. Check, check, check. Yeah, I'm good on this. Mm, no, I, I could work on that. And then reference the material that we elaborate in much greater detail and then work on that. Then create strategies for each of these things. This is a major commitment. This is not something you're going to do just today or just this month. You're going to do this on an ongoing perpetual basis in your organization. And like I always remind you in these um, situations, in these concepts, as we discuss these things, is it's not a binary. It's not good or bad, right or wrong. There is a spectrum. You want to go from being, maybe you're not that great at some of these things. You're pretty poor at some of them. And then you get better. You know, you we've discussed before that you've got to crawl before you walk, and then you got to walk before you run. And so, you're gonna to have to do some of these things and explore these things and work your way from your current state to your desired state. We can word that a number of ways, but you get the idea. Don't be discouraged if you realize when you start to delve into these videos, oh my goodness, there's just a lot that's required to be an effective manager, to maximize the return on my people and my human resources. But it's fun. That's what this is all about. We're trying to learn together. So I'm gonna leave it at that today and I want you to leave a comment, is there an area you'd like me to elaborate on? Have I missed something completely? For sure I have. I know I've missed some concepts here. When I decided, when I wanted to answer the question, what can I do to maximize the potential of my people? Or what can I do to maximize the return on my investment in my human resources? I wanted to put together a list that would be very comprehensive, but certainly not exhaustive. And as I say, if you visit our channel, there will be far more uh, content. There's a lot of other videos that will elaborate on some of these concepts and I hope you get a lot of it out of it. Don't forget to download the materials, the scorecard and the, the little checklist for yourself. It'll help you. It's absolutely free. We will just uh, get your name, name and email address and you'll have access to that. We're not going to sell your information. We never do that. We uh, will also, we're not going to spam you if you want to get our newsletter where you can get all sorts of other information and free downloads and that kind of stuff, then you should sign up for that. Visit our website. If you need assistance with any of the concepts we discuss, that's what we do. That's what Bickert Management BMI does. So reach out to us, contact us, and we'll do our best to, uh, with a, a very cost-effective means, help you work your way through these concepts. I hope you'll leave a comment uh, in the... Uh, uh, the comments below that we can all learn from because we need to learn from one another perpetual refinement.